Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to take a look at five amazing shortcuts in Logic Pro X. Some of these you're going to need to map yourself, some of them you're going to need to realize are already there and start using them. I use these every single day in my productions, in my mixes, and they just open up a workflow so much easier. They make you get around the program far quicker and far better. Let's jump straight in. So the first one I want to take a look at is Tap Tempo. Now, I know Logic kind of gets a bad rap for Tap Tempo. They say that it doesn't exist, that it's not very good. It's there, you just need to know where it is. So first of all, before we do too much, what I want to do is go into Preferences and then go to Advanced Tools. You're going to make sure that you've got all these enabled. If nothing else, just make sure you've got the Advanced Editing enabled because this is going to make things a lot easier for you. It's going to mean that a lot of these shortcuts are actually available to you that wouldn't be before. So make sure you've got all of these enabled. And then for tap tempo, we're just going to edit the key command. So the way that we edit key commands in Logic Pro is we go up to Logic Pro, up to key commands, and then go to edit. Or seeing as we're using shortcuts, we can use Alt and K. This is where we can see all of our key commands, everything that's mapped already, everything that isn't. And you can easily search for stuff here. So let's just go up to the search bar and type in tap tempo. Now tap tempo, for those of you who don't know, it enables you to just tap a key combination in time with what you're trying to get the tempo of. So for this, I like to have certain key combinations that I use. I like to use the modifier keys, Control, Alt, Shift, and Command. Um, sometimes you'll get stuff that kind of overlaps, but we'll take a look at that. So for this one, I'm going to click Key Label, Learn by Key Label, and I'm just going to press Shift, Control, and Alt, and then I'm going to put this as T. So I know that that is my key combination for tap tempo now. And what I can do is if I close this down, I can go to the beginning of a track and I can just press this in time and it will set the tempo of the track in time with that. Let's take a listen to this drum track that I want to work out the tempo of. Now I could go into my smart ed editor and kind of analyze it, but it's a bit of a long winded way. If you do this once, you'll have it set up for life and you can just carry on doing it. Let's take a listen to these drums and try and work out the tempo. Okay, so that's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's gone on to 98 point something. I'm gonna assume that I was a little bit out of time there and say that's around 100 BPM. Now you may get a pop-up arriving here about auto enabling external sync. If you do, just click okay. If you've not already used a setting that kind of messes with the synchronization, then you may have to do this. If you do, click okay. If you don't, don't worry about it. Let's now drag this onto the bar line. And let's take a listen and see if I've been accurate with that. I'm going to turn my click on by pressing K. Fantastic, we're in time. It's a great way of working out what tempo a pre-recorded piece of audio is at, but it also enables you to be more creative. If you've got a lyric in your head or you've got a bass line or a beat in your head, you can work out what the tempo of that is before you even start inputting some audio or inputting some MIDI information. Super handy, number one, tap tempo. Number two is to do with this real hot topic at the moment of gain staging. I'm not going to get too much into gain staging. If you want to know what that is, take a look at the video up here. I've gone real in depth on it and you can learn all about it. But gain staging for me is all about getting the first level right. And in this instance, I've been sent some tracks to mix as I often get. And we've got a bit of a mixed bag. If we just scroll down, we can see that some stuff is either healthy level, some stuff is quite low, some stuff is even lower than that. What I want to do initially is to get everything to an approximately similar level. I don't want to have all my faders, some up massively high, some down really low. I want to have everything kind of around at Unity so that I can work from there. It just makes everything so much easier. So in this instance, normalized gain is already set up in Logic. You don't have to go into key commands, but you just have to know where it is. So I'm going to select all my regions and I'm going to press Control, Alt and G. And that's going to bring up my normalized gain dialog. And we can do a few things in here. We can go collective selection, individual tracks, individual regions, and we can do it peak or loudness. Now, without going too much into it, collective selection means take everything and normalize that entire mix of everything to your predefined level. Here it is, minus one. I'm not going to do that. I want to go to individual regions. If I had stuff on individual tracks, but I had regions split up and I didn't want to normalize them all separately, then I could go individual tracks and that would be fine. But each individual track has just got its own region here. So this is what I want to do. Individual regions. And then just for safety, I'm going to go down to minus three. So this means that every single region that I've got on my logic window here is going to analyze each of those 
and normalize each of those regions to a set peak level of minus three. So the loudest part of each region is going to be minus three decibels. This is set to peak. You could do it to loudness if you wanted to, but for now, this is going to be great. And then we just click apply. And there we go. It's resized all of these and it's made them so that we're going to have minus three as the peak. That means it's going to bring some down. It's going to bring some up. If there was anything that was going above to minus two, minus one, it's going to bring those down. Anything that's really quiet, it's going to bring them up. And it's going to make your mixing life so much easier. That is gain staging 101. Bring everything up to an appropriate level before you start processing. There you go. Normalize gain. That's number two. Now, number three, this is the classic scenario for anyone who's ever programmed drums or been sent some programmed drums to mix. Take a listen to this. It's all one velocity. There's no dynamics there. There's no human element to it. It's all just maximum volume all the time. If we take a look at these, they're all at 127, all the reddest they can go, they're all the hardest they can be. I'm going to show you how you can randomize the velocity of these with just a key combination. Now, the way that we would normally do this is, let's say we want to do it for the snare to start off with. So I'm going to select my snare, the first snare, and then I can select all the other MIDI notes that are on that one snare channel by selecting Shift and E. That's going to select all my snares. Now, the way we would normally do this is we'd go into functions, we'd go MIDI transform, and then we would go random velocity which is fine. And then from there, we could say, let's bring them all down to the highest is gonna be 120, the quietest is gonna be, I don't know, 80, something like that. And then we could select operate. And that's fine, but it's quite a lot of clicks to go around. It's quite a lot of uh, menu diving. We don't wanna do that. We're gonna save this as a preset, and then we're gonna save a key command to do this for us. If you're like me and you work a lot with MIDI drums or more accurately people sending you MIDI drums and you need to humanize them, you need to randomize those velocities, this is going to be an absolute lifesaver. So up here, I'm going to go to my presets. I'm going to create a new transform set. And this is going to create essentially a preset with the settings that I've applied here. So randomized velocity, maximum 120, minimum 80. We're going to go to create a new transform set. And it's going to ask us if we want to call it a uh, new parameter set one or if we want to rename it. Let's rename it. Let's call it drums velocity set. That's fine. Okay, and we're going to rename it. So now we have got a preset applied to this. That's just the first step though. We can set the key command to do this. Now this is in my uh, list here and this is one of the user sets. These are all the normal transform sets. This is my user set and that's going to become important. If we close that down and go up to our key commands again and just type in transform set. Then you can see here, select and operate, use a transform set. That is exactly what we want to do because for all these channels, we want the kick, the snare and all the symbols to be transformed. We want them to have that random velocity applied to it. So I'm going to select my user preset number one and learn by key label. Now you can do this to whatever key you want. I like to have this to Alt, Control, Shift, P. I like to have mine all kind of coming from the same modifiers that Control, Alt, Shift, and P. Um, and then I just change the letter to a, a number or whatever it is to change something else. So we've now got that. We can close this down. Let's select everything here, all these MIDI regions. Let's go Alt, Control, Shift, and P. And it's done it for us. And what's even better is that we can then go again. We can keep pressing it. Keep listening, listen back. So if we don't like how it's randomized it the first time, then we can go in and do it again. You can also do this for anything within that MIDI transform. So if you wanted to do it to fix velocity for whatever reason, if you wanted to do it to uh, humanize, you could do that. You can do it to anything that you might want to do to MIDI notes and you can assign it to a key command. No more menu diving, no more going around and making loads and loads of clicks. Set it to a key command and go crazy. That's number three set all your MIDI notes to a random velocity using a key command. Number four is about our snap values. Now back to this track where we had the drums that we worked out the tempo of. We now know that this is at 110 BPM. Let's say I need to copy this particular region and I want to move it on to the second chorus. It's a chorus guitar and I want to bring it onto the second one. If I press Alt and then drag it, then I can do that, but I'm gonna have to line it up and it's a, it's a bit of a pain. So, by default, it's set to smart on our snap. 
If we go up to the top where it says snap, we can turn it off and we can turn it on. Smart is going to kind of try and work out exactly where you want to drag that to. It's not necessarily going to automatically drag it to a bar line or to a beat line or to a tick, a sample, whatever. It's going to try and kind of work out what you're doing. I don't like it to work it out for me. I like to tell it what I want it to do. And I can set up some key commands for this. So you'll notice if I go to my snap to grid on smart, bar and beat, I've got these set up to alt command one, two and three. So if I press those, alt and command one, it's at smart. Alt command two is at bar and we get a handy dialog to tell us that. Alt command three is at beat. Now this is so easy to have just under your fingers, especially when you've got the numerical keyboard, because it just means that it's directly there, left hand on the modifiers, right hand on the numbers. And you can quite easily just move these across. I like to have these kind of sequentially, so my smart is just the default number one, and um, bar I think of as kind of the first thing that I might want to do if I'm copying anything over. Beat is less important for me if I'm perhaps moving um, a vocal around and I want it to be a beat later, something like that. But for me, Alt Command number two is going to be the most useful, so I set that to my bar. Let's see how we can achieve that. Again, we're going to go into our key commands and edit. And if we just type in snap, then it comes up for us right up the top. So smart mode is the first one for snap, and bar is second, and then beat. We can change division to, let's put that to uh, Command Alt 4 and it does it for us. This is so, so handy if you are working with audio where you need to copy stuff across. If you want to copy a chorus onto the next chorus for a double, or a guitar that you only play once, or a drum beat, synth, whatever it is, you can easily set these snap values, and you can do it by a key command. I use that every single day. I would never live without that. That's number four. Set your snap values by a key command. Now, number five is about plug-in undo steps. This always eluded me because Logic said that it could do it, but I could never really work out how to do it without looking through the manual or anything. It just annoyed me. I knew Cubase could do it, and I wanted Logic to be able to do it. It said it could, but I, I could just never work it out. And once it did, this was an absolute game changer, and it was, it was a stupid little thing. But let's have a look at it now. Let's have a look at it in a certain scenario. So on this vocal bus, I'd like to add an EQ, and I want to add um, some mid-range, let's say. Quite a healthy boost of mid-range. But then if I want to change the frequency, but then listen to it how it was before, or how it is now, how it was before. You can do that on the undo and redo, but what about having a key command? Well, if you press command and Z, it doesn't do anything to the EQ, it just gets rid of it, because as far as logic is concerned, that's the last step that you made, putting that EQ on. It doesn't care about plugin changes. So let's put it on now, and if we were to make that EQ change, if we go up to where it says factory default, or wherever your presets are, then you can go to include plugin undo steps in project undo history. And this means that when you make an EQ change or a plugin change of any kind, and then you press undo, it's going to undo the plugin change. So let's take a listen to this track with this mid range boosted, and then we're going to change the frequency. Then we're going to undo it. Oh, it takes a man to know that something's done. Okay, I kind of like it higher. But let's see how it would be if it were back at that original frequency. And I can do that by listening and pressing undo. I come to you like I and it will just snap back to the original place. And you can also do redo by pressing command, shift, and Z. And that's going to redo your plugin change. So you can easily A, B between two changes on a plugin. That was a game changer for me. So helpful. Thanks so much for checking it out. Those are five key commands that I use day in, day out. Some were there, but were kind of hidden. Some I had to create for myself. And I think they're fantastic uses of the key commands because they make things go so much quicker, which is exactly what shortcuts should do. Are there any that I've missed out there? Anything that you really think I use this every day and Sam needs to know about it? Please do let me know about it in the description below. But until then, thanks a lot for checking it out. Make sure you see the rest of the channel and I'll see you soon. Take care.